everyone, and welcome to Storytime. My name is Christy, and my pronouns are she and her. I am so happy that you're joining me today. So let's get started. Everybody sit down, sit down, sit down. Everybody sit down on the floor. Not on the ceiling, not on the door. Everybody sit down on the floor. Thank you. So my friends, today I am so excited that you're joining me because I have a very special story I would like to read to you. Uh-oh, a monkey puppet has a friend, a baby shark over today. It sounds like something's happening. Let's go check it out. Hey, give that back! That's mine! Hey! <sighs> hey, you two. Looks like there's a problem over here. There is! Monkey puppets being mean! Let's go over to the table so we can calmly talk about what the problem is and hopefully find a way to solve it. This seems like a pretty good time to take five. When we take five, we're taking a break from what we're doing and we're trying to calm down. So when we take five, we're going to breathe in and breathe out. And as we breathe in, we're going to think one, two, three, four, five, and breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, and breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. Friends at home, you can try too. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, and breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> I'm feeling calmer already. So let's see if we can't solve this problem. So let's take turns talking about what we want right now without interrupting each other. Mm, what can we use? Oh, what about that pine cone, monkey puppet? Can you grab it? Thank you. This will be our talking pine cone. While you are holding the pine cone, you can talk. And if you are not holding the pine cone, your job is to listen quietly. Okay, so monkey puppet, you're holding the pine cone. Um, what is it that you want right now? I want to build the best trick ever so we can play and have fun. My baby shark isn't letting me. Ah, uh, I see. Hmm. So, Monkey Puppet, please pass the talking pine cone to Baby Shark. Baby Shark, what is it that you want? I want to play too, but Monkey Puppet isn't letting me. So, Baby Shark, how did that make you feel? Sad and mad. Hmm. You came over to play with Monkey Puppet, but you're not getting a chance to play. That makes you feel sad and mad. Mm. Uh, Baby Shark, can you please pass the pine cone back to Monkey Puppet so he can say how he feels? Good job. You both are doing such a really good job of listening to each other's feelings. Okay, so Monkey Puppet, how are you feeling? I was feeling frustrated because the track wasn't going how I wanted it to. I see. It's hard when things aren't going your way. That made you feel frustrated. Monkey Puppet, I heard you listening carefully when Baby Shark was talking. What did she want? She wanted to play. Ah, and how did she feel? She was sad and mad. 
Baby shark? I saw you listening quietly to Monkey Puppet. What did he want? He wanted to build an awesome track for us. And how did he feel when the track kept changing? Mm -hmm. He... He was frustrated. Oh my, that sounds like a tough situation. But you know what? You're both very smart and you're both very nice. And I think that between the two of you, you could come up with a good three good solutions to this problem. Baby shark, you've done a great job holding the pine cone. I don't think we need it anymore. Thank you. You're a problem solving team now. Um, maybe we could put the track away and play something else that we like. Like reading a book? Uh, yeah. Or we can both make the track together so we can finish faster and then we can play with it. I want my track to be squiggly. Me too. Oh, uh, or you can make the track and I can get some sticks and pine cones to be the people and cars and stuff. Oh, oh, or, or we can both make the track together really fast and then... We can both decorate it with sticks and pine cones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we could read a book first, and then we could both make the track, and then we could both decorate the track. Yeah! Those are great ideas. I knew you could do it. So, which one will you try? Mm, uh, maybe read first? Yeah, and then we could both make the track and find sticks and things. That sounds great. Let's seal the deal with a friendly hip bump. Nice job, you two. So, is there a book you'd like me to read? I have one in my bag. My mom packed it. It's called The Squirrels Who Squabbled. The Squirrels Who Squabbled by Rachel Bright. Illustrated by Jim Field. For Robbie, bestest sharer of everything in life, except chips. And for our dear little Lola, welcome to the world. In a towering forest where summer had been, the leaves turned to gold as a cold wind blew in. And as autumn arrived with a sky raging red, the sleepiest creatures oh, got ready for bed, while up in a tree swung a flighty young squirrel, who everyone knew as Spontaneous Cyril. Now, most foresty folk had seen to their needs through the plentiful months of mushrooms and seeds. They'd built up their stores so they'd all be well fed through the frosting of winter that glittered ahead. But Cyril, he lived in the now and the here. He'd adventured and partied his way through the year. So his cupboard was empty. His hollow was bare. He hadn't a mouthful of food anywhere. But wait, what was that? Over there, take a look. A single lone pine cone wedged in a nook. He squealed with delight and for very good reason. For inside were the very last nuts of the season. But Cyril wasn't alone. There were more hungry eyes. Yes. Plan ahead Bruce had his sights on the prize. Though he'd gathered fresh treasures of every sort, Bruce was convinced he was one pine cone short. I simply must have it, he wistfully cried as he dreamt of the fresh, juicy pine nuts inside. So, as Cyril set off on his way to the ground, Bruce 
He was also last pinecone bound. They sprinted and scurried with no time to gamble. They scratched at the bark in their scampering scramble. But their panic and haste shook the tips of the spruce and the pine cone. It trembled and then it came loose. Both squirrels gave chase at a lightning pace. This was the start of a wild, nutty race. It's mine, shouted Squirrel. No, mine, hollered Bruce. You don't stand a chance. Give up. It's no use. I'm hungry, cried Cyril. This cone is not yours. Stay back, shouted Bruce. This cone's for my stores. It boing over bushes it flew through the air it binged on the nose of a slumbering bear <laughs> it bounced over boulders then came to a stop then teetered and wobbled and quivered and plop both squirrels followed. Oh, the water was fast. Would they learn that they needed each other at last? But each was intent on how he could win. So they didn't quite notice a bird swooping in. <coughs> Cyril and Bruce, they watched in dismay as their pine cone disappeared up and away. Come back, shouted Cyril. There are nuts, explained Bruce. But all hope was gone. It was simply no use. And meanwhile, they drifted right up to the ledge. Greed, it was driving them. Over the edge! Cyril and Bruce, they had taken a fall. They were paying the price for wanting it all. They'd squandered their chances to team up and share. Would their nutty young hopes simply end in despair? Bruised and bedraggled, they swept past dry land. Cyril grabbed at a branch with a trembling hand. Catching Bruce with the other, he heaved and he huffed and he pulled him to safety with panting and puffs. They dragged themselves up with sputtering wriggles. Then Bruce looked at Cyril and exploded in giggles. <laughs> How silly we are, he managed to mutter. How greedy I've been, he proclaimed with a splutter. We shall change from today. May the squabbling cease. We should celebrate seeing we're both in one piece. From that day and forward, they made a great pair. They would gather together and found they could share. Yes, Cyril and Bruce, they knew in the end. The best thing to share is a laugh with your friend. Sharing and taking turns is more fun than fighting. Especially sharing a laugh. Uh, are you ready to get back to our track? As long as you don't take the last pine cone. What? Uh. <laughs> hey, you two. Before you head back to the track, there's just one thing I'd like your help with. Saying goodbye to the friends. Our circle is on. It's over, it's over, 
our circle is over it's time to say goodbye goodbye friends till next time for related content please follow the links in the description box below see you next time when families share special time reading, singing, and saying rhymes together, children begin to develop a positive association with activities that involve language. For information on how reading together helps foster children's communication skills, check out the Ready for Reading program at the Toronto Public Library. You will find a link to more information in the description box below. Happy reading!